This is Clarence Moy with the Words Daily talking to Nelson Craig, director of Them Covenant. Nelson, how are you? I'm doing great. Excellent. So, uh, of course, you you directed a few but you directed many episodes, including the pilot. Not all, not the entire season, though. Why actually did you choose to not direct the entire season? That that seems to be something that is trending in the in the current uh, limited series arena right now. Sure, sure. Well, you know when. When the show was set up, um, there was a number of directors attached, so we didn't, you know, it was it wasn't set up to be done that way. I I had a conversation a couple episodes in with Little Marvin, the uh, showrunner and creator, and and he was like, okay, now I see why it makes sense to have one or two directors for the whole series because it is it is kind of becoming the trend and a way to get a little more focused, you know, vision throughout the series. And uh, okay. I have a feeling that you know in the future little marvin may move down that road yeah so we will uh talk about a few little episodes in a minute but i wanted to start with before working on them you'd obviously worked with ryan murphy quite a bit across sure. ma the many of his series that he has <laughs> uh, you know in various stages yeah uh, what what lessons did you learn from working under murphy that you then took forward to something like them well i mean working with ryan is an amazing thing i mean ryan murphy is a singular artist and visionary you know he's changed the industry i mean the, the guy created the miniseries format i mean you know it's he's uh he's he's an auteur you know creator so mm -hmm. to kind of be working with him side by side for you know six years uh five six years wasn't you know what kind of experience you know it's it's a unique experience so you know i got to travel the world in ryan's private jet and like you know <laughs> see how he did things and you know, I was his right hand man in a way we would really, um, you know, we would do pose we did American Horror Story, we did Versace, we did uh, OJ American Crime Story, um, Ratchet together and you know so it was it was an amazing like it was an amazing learning experience and you know Ryan approached me, uh, you know, a couple years into our, our tenure and asked me what I wanted to do, and I said I'd love to try directing. And uh, he was like, okay, go do an American Horror Story. So next thing I know, I'm directing Sarah Paulson, Kathy Bates, you know, Cuba Goody Jr., wow. Wes Bentley, you know, Evan Peters. So it's like, you know, it's so it's like he is a person that kind of gave me my start, gave me my break, and and uh, has helped a lot of people, you know, minorities. I'm Asian. He's helped a lot of women, um, you know, and he's so, yeah. So he's he was able to kind of, you know, trust me enough to, to let me kind of, do that and get me started and uh and 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 it's guided me ever since so yeah he's been an amazing amazing force in my my career excellent so when you when you look at something like them which is of course outside of the ryan murphy universe um what was it about them as a project that that spoke to you and said oh this is something that i want to take on well you know i it's just it's the material i mean little little marvin is 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 a it was his first show the scripts were amazing the first two that i read and um you know, it's not every day you get to get material like that, you know, that's that different and unique and bold. Um, and, you know, I read those scripts. I was like, okay, yeah, very interested. I met with him, you know, didn't, didn't know much about him. And, and he just had an incredible like enthusiasm for movies, TV. He was just excited. He loved some of the things I'd done on Versace and, and Pose and he'd seen my work and he knew it. And it was just like, uh, it was a really exciting collaboration with him because he was so, um, you know, so he was a visionary and, you know, to, to do your first show and to have it land with this kind of impact, that's unique, you know? So, so I really respect him and, and his voice and, uh, and uh, was just happy to be part of part of that team and help him bring his vision to life. Yeah, I can imagine we uh, I had a conversation with him actually, and we nerded out quite a bit over horror <laughs> films. He has he loves Hitchcock. He loves horror, he loves 70s yeah. horror. I mean, we, we talked a lot about that. So that was I can just a, it must be such a tremendously fun opportunity, even considering the difficult, very intense. And as you said, bold, it is a very bold subject matter. Um, I, I can imagine that he kept it pretty light, knowing that having that encyclopedic knowledge of of horror and, <laughs> and movie Definitely. history. Yeah, because it's hard. You know, it's hard yeah. creating those sequences, and it's it's hard on the actors. It's emotionally really trying. You know, for me as a director, and you know, being around some of those images, it's like I've got a two year old son, and okay. you know, some of the content was you know almost too much for me. And and you know, so but you know, he was a great 
kind person and was there for us. He was there for the actors. And he also, he didn't have a heavy hand. And, you know, like he, he let the creative people do what they needed to do. And he wasn't there every moment micromanaging in, in a great way. You know, he was, he was writing the scripts and, and, and obviously weighing in on creatively and everything. But yeah, he, he trusted the artists, you know, that he had to, 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 to bring those things to life too. So it was an amazing collaboration. And uh, I think the only way you can really get stuff of that quality, you know, and very much like how Ryan Murphy works as well. You know, when he trusts you, he trusts you. And, and it's a, and it's a really fulfilling kind of relationship. Yeah. So you, you obviously started with the pilot directing the pilot, which of course sets the tone and the visual sense uh, for the rest of the series. What kind of choices did you make in that pilot episode that were then, you know, carried out through the other uh, subsequent episodes? Well, I mean, for, for me, it was really about falling in love with this family. You know, it's, it's the, the, you know, for me, horror, thriller, whatever you want to call this terror, you know, it, it, you need to really, really be emotionally invested with, with the actors and with the, with the, with the lead group. And, you know, we had, you know, Ashley Thomas, Deborah Arendi, you know, uh, I mean, incredibly likable people, you know, Shahadi and Melody. Um, so that wasn't difficult, but we just, I really focused on making that family work emotionally putting the audience with that family loving them you know understanding who they were as people as best i could and and we worked a lot on a lot of those scenes um you know and and, and we we kind of we we did a version of the pilot and we uh we realized we also wanted to be a little more with the family in the beginning so we uh so we actually re, LM rewrote a couple of the early scenes and add a little additional material so we could learn a little bit more about them. Like the car ride in was, was, uh, was lengthened. And so, yeah, so it was great to, great to work with those actors, build those moments, build that family. Cause we, you know, we want to be with them for kind of the terror that they endure as we go. And uh, it was really great. Yeah, that's interesting. That actually, uh, that makes a lot of sense because it really grounds you in, in knowing who they are and in caring about these people because that, that way, knowing what you have to go through to get, you know, for the rest of the, the first season, yeah. you need some, some sort of emotional investment to carry you through. Otherwise, it, it just becomes, I would, I would imagine it would become too difficult to, to really entertain if you didn't care for the characters as much as you need to considering yeah. what they go through. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so talking about that, actually, and, and you mentioned having a young son yourself, is did that weigh into your decision to not direct the fifth episode, which has that very climactic, very emotional, very difficult to watch sequence, that, what I'll call yeah, the cat in the bag yeah. sequence? Yeah, it's a, it's a really difficult sequence. Yeah, and it, it was, you know, Janica did such an amazing job with it. And, you know, it wasn't, yeah, it was never my episode. So I never, you know, I, did, I didn't want to... Uh, you know, and LM kind of told me, he's like, you know, you, you don't have to be emotionally involved in that moment. You know, it, it's mm -hmm. just, it's, uh, it's pretty brutal. So I, I didn't, uh, I wasn't involved in that. I, would, I wasn't there that day, you know, when we did that. Was there ever a, a conversation or a sense in any of this that, you know, is this pushing too far? Is an audience ready to, to undertake this, this content and this, this, you know, the, the, the tragedy of those moments? Sure. I mean, you know, it's, it's a, it's difficult material, um, you know, and LM, little Marvin, you know, when I, we talked about the piece, you know, he was like, it's, it's really, uh, you know, as much as it is horror, he wanted it to be a show about terror. You know, what does it feel like to be other? What does it feel like to be the victim of systematic racism where there are no safe spaces, you know, and, and the, you know, the idea was that there isn't, you know, they, there is no kind of relief from the terror. And that's, you know, that kind of drove our creative dis, dis, you know, discussions and what we chose to show or not show. And, and you know, LM's vision and voice was clear. And, and, you know, he wanted to, you know, do something that was bold and, uh, you know, create a conversation about, you know, some of those images, you know, what it feels like to be systematically kind of othered you know, and, and that's, that drove those creative choices. So I, I think they, uh, I think they were effective in that way. I want to talk about uh, working with the actors, working with Ashley and working with Deborah in terms of guiding them. I mean, they're fantastic actors. They give fantastic performances. Um, what kind of, of 
um, relationship building or what kind of strategies did you use to make sure that you were helping guide them through this this material? Well, you know, they're, they're amazing actors, they're raw talents, um, you know, so, you know, and it was like, it was a big chance for them to really get these starring roles. I mean, they were so excited and they were, you know, so ready for it. And they, you know, the, what was acquired of them was huge. And I think one of the first interviews meetings I had at uh, Amazon, you know, I said like, the horror stuff's great, the set pieces, those things we can do, but it's like what I what I really want to be there for is for the actors because they're going to need support, they're going to need guidance through a lot of those scenes and and um, you know so I really focused on being there for them, creating a relationship with them, um, and and making them feel as safe as I could within that space and. You know, I think we we got a great level of trust, you know, that developed over time and and you know the more that. We trusted each other. Uh, we the deeper we could get in the scene work and uh, and and really improve it, and you know just be there for them. And you know they're going through a lot. I mean, Deborah's like the physicality of some of that stuff, the possession on the bus. I mean, it's just it's really brutal on our body. And and we were working, you know, sometimes six days a week to get all those sequences shot. So you know, there's a there's a physical toll that comes with with being number one and two and two on the call sheet. And uh, they rose to the challenge in just amazing ways. It was just so great to watch, and I, I love that they're getting recognized for that dedication and what they put into it. Yeah, absolutely. I talked to both of them, and then you know, we just we had really interesting conversations about you know what it took to get into those moments, and you know how do you you ramp up. And, and accurately portray that sort of emotional, uh, that level of emotional severity to, you know, to make it feel authentic and, and not necessarily just over the top. Um, did you have a lot of rehearsal? Did you, did you go for a lot of rehearsal time? Was that, you know, was that one of the keys to making sure that, you know, they were knowing how to play those moments? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like we, we, you know, unfortunately on a TV schedule, you don't have a lot of time because you're trying to shoot 10 episodes of material, but you know, we did, we, we would, we, you know, we met, uh, we would talk about the scenes as best we could. Um, uh, you know, and we, and the, the great thing about having a writer like LM, Little Marvin is like, as we would see the cuts and he would see the cuts, like we would, we could recalibrate. And sometimes since we were in our sets there, we could go back and shoot parts of scenes or, you know, we could, cause we, we were, you know, it was his first show and it was, it was my first show, you know, directing the pilot and EPing and, we were able to kind of calibrate a lot of that stuff as we went, which was really great. Um, especially, you know, it was interesting because we had the pandemic kind of hit in the middle of the show. We were almost That's done right. with it. So we had like this huge long break, you know, where we couldn't shoot. They shut Hollywood down. And then we had we had a, a couple scenes still from the pilot to shoot. So it was like, a, it was a weird like way to kind of come back to the beginning at the very end, yeah. um, which it, it actually came out to be a good thing because we could like, LM was able to watch the rough cut of the pilot and, you know, kind of write some additional material, which we could put in there. And, and you know, and, and it was a, it was a unique experience. Let's put it that way. I'll never probably do like a nine month break between, uh, between scenes. Hope not. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I know uh, little Marvin has, as we've mentioned this, this wealth of, you know, almost encyclopedic knowledge of horror, um, yeah. visually though, what were some of your reference points as you started to look at to how you were going to shoot these episodes? Well, I mean, I really wanted kind of, we had like the 19, we'd had like that Hitchcockian kind of like fifties mm -hmm. vibe, which was the outside, this hard veneer that you see. And then, you know, LM and, and myself, I really gravitated to kind of like 70s horror a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I, I really, I added all these kind of zooms, these like center punched things and this kind of, I wanted to create a real sense of unease and tension. And the way for me to do that was to kind of reach into some of that odd, like, you know, slow zooms, center punch things, like these kind of like things that felt a little off that you would never see in like a 50s film, you know, and, and can... Kind of bring you emotionally into a different something jarring you know and, and and uneasy within that kind of 50s slickness so it was kind of like how do we how do we start with that 50s slickness but then break it down and show you what the cracks underneath and what's really happening and and for me that was kind of like 70s horror to, to give it a rawness and a stylization a little bit yeah 
Absolutely. So what was your biggest challenge you, you needed to solve? What was some, something that was uh, a scene that was just, there was a lot going on there, not just in terms of content, right? No, or, you know, I'm talking about technically, what was some te- what were some of the technical problems that you had to solve? Well, we had, it. Well, there's a great pie sequence at the end of episode two, which is this like seven minute eating. It's a space to scene about a man eating a pie. So, yeah. you know, we, you know, just from a directorial standpoint, that's really difficult because there's very little dialogue. It's all just told with looks and moments and, you know, gags. And you have to tell this whole story of this, this PTSD. So that was a real challenge from a director. You know, how do you shoot that? How do you tell that story? And, um, and on this, on the other hand, just from a technical standpoint, you know, that one of the actors was, was gluten intolerant. So we had to, so they were like, hey, let's get a gluten-free pie. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> but what that means is that the pie had no like the gluten helps it stick together so we we had like a nightmare time like because Deborah has to like get out this perfect piece of pie in that scene and that it has to hold together and it just crumbled the whole pie just fell apart like the first two takes and it was like oh my god it's <laughs> so getting that pie to like function and work and then get it on the plate and then shoot all the inserts and then have Ashley eat it and then like make it all match was really difficult um and do these amazing performances you know because like how many actually thomas can only eat so many pieces of pie so right. like, so it was a very difficult challenge to kind of do that over the course of like two days you know to, to do this pie sequence but i have to say ashley killed that performance he did such an amazing job he did i think we did just two takes of his close-up eating that pie he like wow. on the first take i was like unbelievable lm was there at the monitor with me we we're like okay we got it <laughs> it was great so we did one more take just for safety but it's like an amazing piece of performance from him and yeah. deborah in that scene is amazing i mean she tells the whole story with just a close-up you know and, and yeah and we it, I, it was just that was that was a challenging scene but i think it really it, it paid off came out really strong absolutely they totally brought it uh, to these to these roles and I don't know what it says about me but I watched that sequence and I know it's supposed to be triggering and traumatizing but I was like gosh I'm really hungry for some pie right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, of course I didn't you know continuously eat it and have uh, you know negative association with it yeah. so um, you know obviously the reactions to them have been all over the map, right? I mean, just some people just, you know, refuse to engage with it. Some people yeah. love it. Um, what's been the most interesting or exciting reaction that you've seen? I mean, I've, I've gotten, I have to say, I've gotten more reaction on this show than anything I've ever directed, you know, from like all the pretty aggressive Ryan Murphy things, all those projects. So it's been really rewarding to have your work, you know, have the work talked about and to create conversations about race and, and, and class and, uh, you know, these are difficult topics to talk about. And, you know, I, I'm just, I'm proud that, uh, you know, it's, it's continued a conversation, you know, I'm uh, Korean. So it's like, you know, with kind of violence against Asian American communities coming to light and uh, some of the systematic racism that, you know, Koreans have encountered and, uh, you know, uh, the, the AA, I, you know, the Pacific Islander communities have encountered. It's, you know, it's good. I, I'm proud of just being able to create stuff that's talking about those things, you know, for the black community, for the Asian community, um, otherness in general and racism. And so, you know, it, while it is, yeah, some of it, some of those topics are hard to talk about. I, I think it's, I think, you know, I'm proud of what we've done to, to further, you know, to be part of that discussion. Can you envision a subsequent series? Of course, I, you know, I, I know this is an anthology series. We haven't heard of, you know, if or what that second season will be. Um, but you, could you see something dealing more closely with the Pacific Islander experience in America? I'd love that. I mean, I'd love to see more roles for Asians on television. I know that's, you know, it's still a battle. And, you know, I was reading some statistics. I think it's like 3% of films have like an Asian role. Blockbuster films have an Asian role in it mostly by the rock <laughs> so it's like you know so it, i think there's a lot of room for some growth there and you know uh, yeah i would like to see more material with uh, with asians with asian roles that don't have anything to do with being asian it's just right. we can cast the best actors or the best people for those roles i think that'd be that would be a great thing yeah, absolutely. And it's really been amazing the way that American, at least film culture, has opened itself up in the past couple of years with, of course, Parasite and, and Minari uh, this past year. Yeah. Um, but what's next for you? 
Well, I've, um, I'm on a project in Toronto right now, which I can't, I can't say, but we'll, we'll release some news pretty soon. Um, so I'll be up here uh, till midsummer directing something. And then uh, I've, uh, I've got um, a couple things in the works, you know, working on a, 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 a film uh, that I'm really excited about. So uh, yeah, so we'll, uh, Stay tuned. we'll have some good stuff coming up. Excellent. Well, Nelson, I think those are all the questions I had for you. Thank you so much for the conversation. Congratulations on the on the series. Congratulations on them. I really loved it and uh, loved your work on it. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye.